Welcome to Think Tech on OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Richard Melendez. And I'm Amber Leatham. In our show this time, we'll ask, what does it mean to go to 2016? We'll take a look at how things have gone for Think Tech this year. We'll take a look at Christmas past and look into what the new year will mean for Think Tech, for you, and for the rest of us. Think Tech is a 501c3 Hawaii nonprofit digital media company founded in 2000. Our mission is to be Hawaii's leading digital media platform for civic engagement. Our slogan is, every day better. Let's take a look at Think Tech's growth over the past year. Most recently, we had our annual holiday gathering at Lani Akea, featuring remarks by David Lasner, president of the University of Hawaii. With his help, we presented awards to the talk show series that best represented the Think Tech mission. Awards went to Cindy Adams for Aloha United We Stand, Rhett Butler for Research in Manoa, Justina Spiritu and Matt Johnson for Hawaii Farmer, State Senator Josh Green for Healthcare in Hawaii, Sharon Moriwaki, Ray Starling, and Mike Hamnett for Hawaii State of Clean Energy, and Bill Sharp for Asia and Review. Congratulations to all of them. The generations do not get along with, with each other sometimes, and Sorry. sometimes those arguments are huge and expensive and involve high stakes. Mm -hmm. and how did you get into this anyway, Tracy? Okay, well, I've been with the Mediation Center of the Pacific for many years, and we handle all types of issues. Um, but we would receive calls from families, so sometimes it would be siblings in conflict over the care of mom and dad, or sometimes, as you say, it would be mom or dad in conflict with their adult children about my kids think that they want to tell me to move into a home and I don't want to, or my kids want to move in with me, which is fine, but I feel like they're taking advantage of me. Hawaii Institute of Marine Biology, that's Laura Nunez-Pan. She's a postdoc researcher there. And Joy Lele Shi, mm -hmm. she's a PhD candidate at SOWEST in oceanography, and they are collaborating on something which is great. We like collaboration. We love collaboration <laughs> yeah, in whatever do. form we think the world is governed. I mean, the future of the world is governed by collaboration. How did you guys get to meet each other? Um, well, one in of the... In a meeting. Yeah, we <laughs> meet each other Fair in a enough. meeting. So, um, so the Gates Lab um, is the, the research laboratory of Ruth Gates. Um, who's is, actually, that, is that the one on Coconut Island? It is on Coconut okay. Island. Um, and and um, Ruth Gates studies um, coral. She's a coral expert. She's actually now the director of HIMB as well. But she's on my dissertation committee. Uh, I'd like to introduce Doug. Doug, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Um, I know uh, you're a busy guy, a lot going on. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so why don't we uh, go ahead and have you give a little background about yourself. Who, uh, who's Doug? Um, so, let me see. Just to correct you, I'm Grand Rapids. So I'm on the other side, not Detroit side. I, I get those two areas mixed <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so basically I just started uh, farming when I was, like, in, like, in the backpack uh, behind my dad, rototilling. We had, like, a small plot, you know. Uh, grew corn, beans, squash, you know, we kind of like lived off the land. Mm. Um, so I was raised that way to probably five, six, seven, eight, somewhere in there. But today I wanted to dig into kind of a comprehensive overview of dengue fever, how it's affecting our people on the Big Island, what it means to us as uh, representative and senator, and really what it means to the state. So Richard, thank you for joining me. Well, thank you for having me. You bet. Great. So a lot of people have been uh, writing to us. They've been concerned. Uh, just by way of very brief overview, last check, we had about 112 cases confirmed by the Department right. of Health. Give me your thoughts about the dengue outbreak to date. Okay. So, you know, dengue is a serious disease. But fortunately, the first time you get dengue, you rarely die. So it's not likely to cause very many deaths. There are other concerns about it, however. Uh, so the problem with this is we have a trajectory that is steeper than the Maui uh, trajectory of their outbreak, which they was in you know, the one in uh, 2000. What was that? 2001. And, 2001. And that was really a wild situation because it happened almost exactly when the 9-11 attack occurred. Right. And that, that hampered them. But even with that hampering, they, you know, had a limited number of cases. You know, we have more than they had in Maui alone already. Our special guest, Matt Lynch, who is the 
sustainability, UH system sustainability coordinator. We're going to examine exactly what that means. Welcome to the show, man. Thanks for having me. <laughs> and Larry Newman, our old friend, coming down because you work with Matt and because uh, with Hawaii Energy, you're always interested in efficiency. That's right. Happy to be here. Thanks. Uh, great. Okay, so the first thing, Matt, is we got to know how you got here. How much time do we have? <laughs> That's a good story. How far back do you want me to go? Can you give us a, a little bio sketch of how you got to be the systems system oh, coordinator. All right, okay, let's start with the easy questions first then. Um, I have walked a very non-traditional path in my life. Um, so um, I'm fourth generation um, Filipino on my mom's side. Uh, my mom graduated from Lilihua. <laughs> And uh, on my dad's side, um, he's Aussie, so they met in college. And from 9 till 19, I actually grew up in Australia and moved back. Ms. Lin is the CEO and founder of Asia Tic Tac LLC. Um, before that, she had a, a number of positions doing research in some leading research institutions in Washington, as well as an internship right here in good old Honolulu, Hawaii, at our friend's Pacific Forum. Um, where she did a lot of research on Chinese military affairs, Chinese strategic affairs, etc. So we want to hear about her company because it sounds real interesting. Uh, and uh, uh, then towards the end, we want to talk about um, strategic issues, of which she's also well versed in. So welcome to Asian Review. Thank you, Bill. Thanks for having me. <laughs> You're quite quite welcome. Well. You know, your company, I, I, the name is intriguing, Asia Tic Tac LLC. Does the name tell us something about the company we should know about? I mean, is there a message there? And if so, what is the message? And we recently rolled out our new video-rich website. It makes our videos more prominent and easier to find. We like it, and we think you will too. Here's the home page. As you can see, it's like a TV channel and focuses on our live streaming video. The biggest news of the year is our new studio. If you've seen it, you'll see that it's perfect for us. It includes a wraparound green screen studio space, a control room, and a reception area where hosts and guests can prepare for their shows. Hi! Hi, guys! Wave in the <laughs> So this is our studio. And we have all our hosts and um, inside here's the main stage, the green room. We are off the air and when you're on a show, you get to be sit right here um, around this way is the floor manager station and this is where most of the magic happens with Zuri over there and Mike over there. <laughs>
Thanks to our underwriters, we have great equipment in the studio, including high-definition cameras, LED lighting, video switching and audio mixing, and a variety of computers to perform all of the tasks involved. We've learned a lot, and we've greatly improved our systems this year. Our production values have never been better. We have a wonderful and dedicated staff to help us do this. Zuri Bender, production engineer. Sachi Slomoff, floor manager. Nick Sexton, floor and systems manager. Ian Davidson, social media manager and Mike Rodriguez and David Jones, videographers. We also have a bevy of hardworking volunteers, including our president, Jay Fidel, and our vice president, Carol Monley. With their help, we've developed an impressive array of talk shows and volunteer hosts. You can see them on our site and on our YouTube channel. We have Kelly Aquina on Ehana Kako, Ethan Allen on Likeable Science, Gordon Bruce and Andrew Lanning on Hibachi Talk, Justine Espiritu and Matt Johnson on Hawaii Farmer, Jay Fidel on Research in Manoa, Aging with Grace, and Aloha United We Stand, State Senator Josh Green on Healthcare in Hawaii, Carlos Suarez and Patrick Bratton on Global Connections, Roy Kodani on Life in the Law, Chris Letham on The Economy and You, Sharon Morawaki, Ray Starling, Mike Hamnett, and Jay Fidel on State of Clean Energy, Stan Oserman on Stan the Energy Man, Ted Ralston on Where the Road Leads, Bill Sharp on Asian Review, Jim Sean on Education Movers, Shakers Reformers, Kirsten Turner on Sustainable Hawaii, Hillary Weinberg on The Whole Gamut, and Howard Wig on Code Green. Over the past year, we have expanded our broadcast schedule to five talk shows every day. That's 25 a week. We stream these shows live on the internet and upload them to YouTube at the end of each broadcast day. You can tune in anytime and see them on our website. We had one especially interesting talk show series this year. It was called Living Legend Lawyers and featured some 60 attorneys admitted to practice shortly after statehood. We made these into a film that was shown at the bar convention in August. It was a hit. Aloha. I'm Greg Markham, 2015 HSBA president. We at the HSBA are very excited about our three-digit project. It's a project where we have interviewed our three-digit lawyers, those lawyers that successfully completed the bar exam and were given three-digit bar numbers during the territorial era all the way up until 1970. I was in Kohuku in the bivouac, and they were shooting live stuff, and I was in this foxhole. And I called Leota Crone, who was then the clerk of the court, and said, Leota, you got to get me out of here. Tell the colonel I have to be there for swearing in. Well, when I came back in 1959 from Harvard Law School, I made inquiry at one of the firms and was told that uh, they would love to have a Harvard lawyer, but they didn't think their clients would understand having to deal with, a, with an Asian. I did not intend to stay with the uh, Smith Wild, but I went to work there in December of 1957 at the awesome pay of $350 a month. I was paid more than that in the Army, and there were eight in the firm, seven partners and one associate. I was the associate. Not necessarily proudly, but we were still highly firm. And it took, took a little while before all of a sudden we all realized we were losing good lawyers. In Chinatown, there were shingles up, so and so, and it said attorney and counselor at law. And I thought about it, and we don't do any more counseling. My boss told me, can you go in and plead my client guilty? I had no idea. I thought I was just going in and saying, not guilty. Well, the prosecutor would, would this is an arraignment. Okay. And then the defense attorney would say certain things. So I'm in the back of the room writing everything down because it was trial by fire. 
Were there any other women in your class? Well, there was one other, and she was going to quit until I showed up. <laughs> and he gave us a little lecture, and he said, as we got up to leave, I want to tell you one thing, you better never forget this. This is the first place people are going to meet, the judiciary, and what justice is. And I want to be sure when they leave, win, lose, or draw, they say I got a fair shake. We knew everybody and you more or less you trust everybody if one guy we know and he'll come back again mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but hey when you have an extension say hey can you give me one say, okay okay mm -hmm. nobody you know people used to cooperate and it was very okay. very nice you have to take um uh, not only the majesty of the law which is what got me into law in the first place but you do have to if you're going to practice you do have to have a very very excellent sense of and patients with details. Hawaii had the lowest number of lawyers per capita of any state in the United States. So they were desperate for lawyers here. And they were trying to recruit lawyers off the mainland. And that was why Frank came to Stanford and interviewed. And he offered me a job. I can, I can remember when we, I first uh, well, I had a complaint to do. I didn't know who signed it. <laughs> I seriously did not. I had the client sign the complaint because <laughs> I didn't know I was supposed to sign it. I thought that the lawyers that we acquired were very good lawyers and everybody got along. And I think that was one of the main reasons <clears throat> why that firm stuck together. Herb Shibabakul became a judge. Then I joined. And then Ron Moon jo joined, and he became the Chief Justice, which makes me wonder what happened to Ron and I. How come <laughs> we didn't get the judgeship? The training that you get and the education that you get going to law school is perfect for the financial industry. I had seen the attorneys, our friends, uh, working very long hours. And, you know, working for a financial institution, eight to five, Monday through Friday. As a, a member of the American College of Trial Lawyers, there was a big solicitation of members to uh, volunteer to represent uh, the prisoners down in Guantanamo. In all, we've created more than 3,700 shows. And since we began streaming not quite two years ago, we've had nearly 400,000 views. The views in 2015 were twice as many as last year. We've increased the use of Skype in our shows, regularly reaching talk show guests on neighbor islands, the mainland, Asia, and Europe. We have one show with a correspondent in Brussels and a new Spanish language show that includes segments from Hawaii and Spain. We also broadcast weekly Think Tech feature shows on OC16.tv. These premiere at 10.30 p.m. on Sundays and play seven times through the week. We are now on our 257th episode, but who's counting? These are available on demand on OC16.tv. We're also uploading them to our channel on YouTube.com. We've continued our downtown forum luncheon programs, first at the Lania Kea YWCA and at the Anthology Group Theater in Bishop Square, courtesy of Nathan Cam, president of Anthology, and Think Tech director Clifton Kagawa. Our next program is a panel on jobs in Hawaii on January 21st. We'll talk more about that later. And next year, we'll do even more. We'll continue our talk shows on science, health, and the social safety net. We'll do more and better shows in the studio and with Skype guests around the world. And we'll do more on-location shoots in the islands. This has all been made possible by the generosity of our underwriters, who are our principal source of funding. Our 2015 underwriters have been Castle and Cook, the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education, Collateral Analytics, Hawaii Business Magazine, Hawaii Energy, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, Hawaii Gas, the Hawaii Institute of Geophysics and Planetology, Hawaiian Electric, Hawaiian Telecom, the High Tech Development Corporation, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Carol Mon Lee and the Friends of ThinkTech, the Scheidler Family Foundation, and the Sydney Stern Memorial Trust. We are very appreciative to them all. In the last year, we've maintained our ThinkTech board at 15 directors. Our directors include Michael Cooper, Jay Fidel, David Day, Jason Harada, Nicole Horry, Cliff Kagawa, David Carl, Sherilyn Lau, Carol Mon Lee, Bert Lam, Lisa Maruyama, Sanford Murata, Shackley Raffetto, Faraz Salom, and Diane Sherman. 
They're all great, and we're proud to have them on our board. We have exciting plans for 2016. One thing is our speaker's corner. Are you running for office? Do you have a new idea? Are you doing notable research? Or do you have a pet project or pet peeve that you want to talk about? We'll give you a chance to express your views on ThinkTech. See our site for details. The other new initiative is our Community Recognition Awards. We will publicly recognize individuals and organizations that have made extraordinary contributions to raising public awareness in the community. We'll present certificates of recognition on our shows, our website, and our daily global newsletter. See our site for details. Want to nominate yourself? You can. Yes, it's been great in 2015, but what does it mean for us now to go to 2016? For ThinkTech, it means new news, issues, and ideas to cover, new shows, hosts, and guests, new viewers, new relationships, and new levels of creativity. We love what we do, and we can only see good things going forward, better every day. What does it mean for you? We hope it means greater awareness of the importance of tech, energy, diversification, and globalism to the future of our state greater attention to the world around us here and globally, and greater focus on Mahayana, working for the common good. That's not asking too much, is it? We hope it also means that you will tune in and turn on to ThinkTech programs and events and get more out of them than ever before. We'll be working for you and looking for you there. we will be exquisitely happy that you join us and let us share our manau. Imua Hawaii, Imua ThinkTech, better every day for all of us in 2016. That's what it means. Our best, best wishes to everyone for a great 2016. And now let's take a look at our ThinkTech calendar of events going forward. ThinkTech broadcasts its talk shows live on the internet from noon to 5 o'clock p.m. on weekday afternoons, and then we broadcast our earlier shows all night long. If you missed a show or want to replay or share any show, they're all archived on demand on YouTube. Visit thinktechhawaii.com for our weekly calendar and our live stream and YouTube links, or better yet, to sign on to our email list and get the daily docket of our upcoming shows. As everyone knows, ThinkTech has a great new green screen studio at Pioneer Plaza. We invite you to come down, see our studio, and be a part of our live audience. Contact Jay at thinktechhawaii.com. Be a part of our civic engagement on ThinkTech. Go ahead, give us a thumbs up on YouTube, or send us a tweet at thinktechhi. We want to know what you're thinking and how you feel about current issues and events affecting Hawaii. We want you to stay in touch with us, and we want to stay in touch with you. Let's think together.
Yes, and on Thursday, January 21st, ThinkTech will join the Anthology Marketing Group to present a program called Jobs for Hawaii, Working for a Better Future at the Anthology Theater on Bishop Square. The program will cover the state of jobs and meaningful careers for the people of our state, whether the job market is adequate for our workforce and sufficient for the economy we'd like to have, and what our governor, legislature, and private sector can do to better provide jobs and careers to keep our young people here. Join us and raise your awareness about the critical changes affecting and taking place in Hawaii. Be a part of the conversation and sign up to attend on thinktechhawaii.com. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of ThinkTech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. Okay, Amber, that wraps up this week's edition of ThinkTech. Remember, you can watch ThinkTech on OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Duke Oishi does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more ThinkTech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on ThinkTech on OC16, visit thinktechhawaii.com. Be a guest or a volunteer, a producer or an intern and help us reach and have an impact on Hawaii. Thanks so much for being a part of our ThinkTech family and for supporting our open discussion of tech, energy, diversification, and globalism in Hawaii. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important weekly episode. I'm Richard Melendez. And I'm Amber Letham. Aloha, everyone. Oh, oh.